Good morning, crafters. I was about to say afternoon, but it certainly isn't that. It's definitely morning at the moment. Welcome to our Halloween special. It's our Spooky Spectacular featuring a whole host of brand new vignettes, especially designed just for Halloween. This the whole day we're going to be doing really, really, really exciting shows. Three different shows. One today, obviously at nine o'clock, which you're watching now. Then one at one o'clock this afternoon, followed by a final show at 5 p.m., all featuring today's deal of the day. So if you're not familiar with deal of the day, it is a special deal, as the name would suggest, that we bring you every single day for 24 hours only. Today's deal of the day is our Halloween special edition vignette. So hop on over to our website, either click on the top banner, which uh, runs across the top of the, all the pages, which uh, details the deal of the day, or click on the big red button on the home page, which says deal of the day. And in that you will find our special edition vignettes uh, specifically designed to celebrate Halloween, which is lots and lots of fun. So the vignettes themselves have been designed to uh, work with previously released die sets, which is great because it may be something you have in your stash already, something perhaps you're considering adding to your collection today. There's lots and lots of versatility with these designs. I'm going to have a little scroll back through the comments. Oh, lots of lovely people joining us. Goodness me, lots and lots of people joining us. We have got Sarah's here. Hello, Sarah Jane. Uh, we're the spooky little ghost. I'm loving the emojis, by the way, you guys. Keep them coming because they really make me smile. Deborah's here. She's got a bat and a pumpkin emoji. Ian's here. Christine says good morning. Tracy's here as well. Yes, well as Carol. Fiona, my dear friend. Hello, lovely. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people joining us. So thank you so, so much. Oh, Ruth says, good morning, Hannah, and all the Carnation Army. Do you know what? You guys are amazing at supporting one another and myself and Carla. So thank you for that. Uh, Kim's here as well. We've got Pauline. I just wonder whether it's going to be a bit too early on a Sunday morning, but it looks like you guys are up and raring to go. Um, Linda's here as well. We've got <laughs> Elaine's just said, yeah, up early is not to miss it. Miss it. Lunch prep to off church at half ten. Back in time for one pm. Oh, that's lovely, Elaine. What a lovely day planned. Carol's here too. Pam from the DT. Morning, Pam, and Doreen as well. Oh my goodness, yeah, I'm getting so many messages in. They keep just flooding in. So thank you for joining me this morning. Ah, oh, I've just seen Mark. Hello, hello, Miss Hannah. Good morning, boss, or also known as work dad. I hope you're well this morning. So deal of the day. Exciting, exciting, exciting. We are bringing you lots and lots of special deals um, designed to either um, give you a little bit of discount on something or give you something a little bit extra for something you may have already purchased. As we've mentioned, the Halloween special is just that. We've got these wonderful, wonderful vignettes. Now, I have popped up on uh, the majority of the... Um, I'm smiling because I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen my mum tune in. She says, morning, Hannah, which is OK. That means I'm not in trouble. If it's Hannah Claire, which is my full name, that means I'm in trouble. But it looks like I'm OK this morning. Good morning, mother. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> so I've just completely lost my train of thought then. Um, Halloween. Let me grab you, actually, because I think you're going to enjoy looking at these. Some of our fabulous samples created by the DT. Now, these, as we've mentioned, these vignettes, these coloured artworks are something that we do, obviously, with most of our die sets. And actually, they are a lot of fun. Now, we wanted to bring you something rather than having to invest in more dies or anything like that. It may be that you've already got most of these at home, in which case you can have a little bit of fun creating Halloween inspired scenes. How about something like this? Isn't this just fabulous? A huge thank you to Janine, who created all of the samples for today's Facebook Live. Uh, let me just see where the button is on here. There we go. I can't wait. It's not very good. Let me try and turn that light off here. There you go. Look, we've got a little light up in the background. So that features one of our uh, tiny lights. And this is actually um, a whole card scene, if you like, a doorstep scene created using uh, the backdrop Vernal Blooms. So yes, we're bringing you these character designs. Yes, we're bringing you these extra vignettes. But do think outside the box because a lot of these little Halloween inspired trees are going to work with your card shapes as well. So the um, Vernal Blooms door opens up to a whole scene. We've got our enchanters there. We've got our candles there. They're brewing up a potion behind the window. 
we've got Wiley Fox. And in the front, we've got season decor um, and a few little flowers from Wedding Volume and the gate um, sort of fence, picket fence, if you like, from Time Worn. These are great at mix and matching. And do you know what? It's so much fun when we do these Halloween specials because it just shows how beautifully the collections mix and match, which is just wonderful. Love that design, Janine. I'm not going to show you all of the cards Janine's created in the first one because we have got um, two other shows today. So I'm going to I'm going to take those and, and show you those um, throughout the day. I think this little one's a cutie. How about something like this? So this features um, the background, the circular shape in the filigree from the wedding volume die set. We've also got our have a hoot, our little owl. What a cutie. What a little sweetie. We've then got, again, those season decor pumpkins there. We've got the time-worn fence. I think that features in quite a few of Janine's samples, actually. Really great for grounding devices. And in the background, we have Quiet Retreat from the um, Tranquil Times collection. And if I just bring that to camera, just have a look. <laughs> it's the humour that Carnation are so amazing from. Take a look at that rooster on the roof. We just moved the, uh, the leaves there. <laughs> got a little skeleton rooster i just the charm of it is amazing the colors are so vibrant it's such a lot of fun love 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 this one final card design i think just to whet your appetite this is a cute one as well thank you janine for all of these here we have another little mouse from enchanters the little enchanters have had a little halloween makeover they've got sort of um i'm gonna say like wizard robes like inspired with the little puffy sleeves they've been dressed which is nice we like our mice having little clothes again season decor pumpkins there and the little mouse janine's used one of the stamp sets which had features a little uh full of flurry of stars lifting one of the pumpkins away and yeah absolutely it does say halloween but do you know what this could be a really great birthday card for someone who loves wizards perhaps they're into the whole sort of harry potter thing have a magical birthday janine has chosen as a sentiment so really that now spans all sense of time and year in the background janine has then teamed this with um one of our most recent releases this is color of autumn um the pumpkins in the background the ruddy roses so again you don't have to just have a whole card decorated with halloween you can mix and match from all the different collections as well which is wonderful let me just see i'm reading through the comments um <laughs> Carla says i'm very very glad it's not me having to remember all the collection names oof do you know what this is going to be a test of my um, memory here, especially with baby brain, because I've not actually written all the collection names down. <laughs> I am literally just remembering them, which is quite good. Normally I have a little cheat sheet sort of pinned up on the wall so I can see what's going on. Now having a little scroll back. Jeanette's here. Hi, Jeanette. She's made it. Welcome, Jeanette. Helena is here. We have um Jacqueline Wendy says oh I had problems finding you but here now phew hi all Wendy on that note and anyone who is wondering we always do our Facebook lives on our brand page which is where you're watching us today um and what I would suggest we always do like an event um join the events join the events because you'll get a show reminder of when we go live all you need to do is click that show reminder and it will take you straight to the live stream which is just an easier way of finding us um We've got Donna joining us from the United States. Hello, Donna. Thank you for making us go international. We've got Remy as well. Lovely. Lots and lots of people joining us. Thank you. So if you are wondering about the vignettes, as we've mentioned, they are available as the deal of the day. They are also free to download Halloween backing papers too. If you just go head onto the website and click on paper downloads, uh, then you can filter by collection, filter by Halloween special, and the free backing papers are available there this morning too. Um, I think without further delay, should we get into a demonstration? Should we have a little play? Let's turn that camera around. Okay, so you can already see it. I've got lots and lots and lots of goodies laid out, ready to have a play. And I thought for this one, we're going to start with one of our, again, most recent collections that we've released. This is the wedding volume from the Fairy Tale Day die collection. So I'm going to show you the dies we're going to be using. So the majority of the card shape is going to be designed using this wedding volume so the book design which has been transformed into a spell book i love that i think it's so much fun we'll also be using the roses and a few little bits of the filigree that feature as well just to jazz it up a little bit also within this design as our characters we will be using our have a hoot so our little owl again with a lovely um, halloween makeover this little owl now has a magical coat a magical cape which is really really sweet we will also include 
the Enchanters, brewing up a little bit of potion. And again, remember, we just mentioned these little chaps have had a little Halloween makeover. They now have their wizard robes on them. <clears throat> We also have Flourished Floral. This was actually um, one of the free die sets back in May um, to celebrate our takeover for Vernal Blooms. This one, just to note, already has, I think, five different colourways. But if I just show you the new one, spooky and black. It's like black velvet. It's absolutely sumptuous and gorgeous. Love, love, love that makeover for that one. And finally, the one we'll be using is season decor. Of course, we had to include pumpkins and of course, our candles and tea lights. And actually on that note, it is worth mentioning all of the dye sets I've shown you already do have a free download for a traditional colorway. What you're adding with the deal of the day is this extra special, a special edition Halloween um, design as well. Uh, let's have a little look. Oh, Sophie, that's lovely. Sophie says, I met your mum the other week. She was so proud of you. Oh, that's lovely, Sophie. So she actually did mention it to me. Um, you met mum at work, didn't you? And she said, oh, lady, I met a lady today who watches your shows, which I thought was just lovely. So thank you for that. Okay, so spell book let's have a little bit of fun this is inspired by um one of janine's uh designs um but it was it, it was just where my mind instantly went when it came to sort of halloween i really was excited about this vignette so we've cut two of the outermost layers so the mats and layers within the wedding volume let me just flip that over and show you you've got your outermost die okay so not the detailed die that creates the book it's the die outside of that that's going to be used to create our card base and we've cut that twice once for the outside of the card once for the front of the card once for the back and then we've scored about an inch down because we want to leave enough gap to get sort of clear of that little curved design onto the score we are going to add our red liner tape now red liner tape is a nice strong adhesive if you're familiar with us if you've watched quite a few of our demonstrations this is how we construct most of our card bases unless it's a one pass cut in which case like um into spring and things like that you know we do go over those in the tutorials but most of them you cut the outermost die twice from 350 gsm perfect smooth card stock a nice construction weight of card then when we come to stand We've got a tent fold card design and because you're using a nice heavy weight of cardstock, it's then going to take lots and lots of layers that we would like to pop on to the top. Um, Kathy says, thank you, Hannah, having a really bad weekend with so much bad news. This is such an uplifting idea. Thank you, Kathy. I'm so sorry to hear you're having a bad weekend. But, you know, that is the wonderful thing about craft. We can lose ourselves for a little while and just enjoy the process of making it such a mindful thing. So I didn't have any heavyweight black card stock and actually I wanted to create my card base from black, you know, to go with the Halloween theme. So all I've done is cut that same layer, the outermost die, from a, a nice lightweight card stock. Uh, this is probably Linda Chapman's, as, um, <laughs> as most of you will know, the black card stock is fabulous from Linda Chapman. And I've then stuck sort of wider tape, the red liner tape, along that front of the card. So we're lining that up, we're holding it in place and removing just one of the strips and then we smooth that into place okay that means we're then hands free we're not having to hold everything whilst we take the rest of the tape away i'd always recommend don't take away the tape first line the die up die cut first because that then just enables you to then line everything up beautifully and create your black cardstock okay now i know it's a bit ripply um it's because obviously it's um gone through my die cutting machine and i had a little bit of a fight with it um well, I kind of, I dropped my demos, so <laughs> some of them are a little bit wrinkly, so do bear with me, I do apologise about that, but we'll be covering this up, so I didn't think it mattered too much. Um, Kathy says, oh, sorry, Kathy, I've just read what it was, Sophie says, I attended Crafting Live yesterday and spent a fortune, happy day crafting, oh, that's fabulous, you know, it's lovely having little crafty treats, is it? and do you know what, I love the fact Carnation do their little crafty treats as downloads, because it means we can instantly access them and we can instantly start playing. Here is one of those downloads. So the wedding volume, uh, when it launched a couple of weeks ago as part of the fairy tale die collection, just had this lovely plain sort of book. So you could then uh, inscribe whatever you wanted, be it invites, be it uh, happy birthdays, be it photos, 
but we've given it a little bit of a spooky makeover. The background cover you see is this lovely purple. Now that purple runs throughout all of the Halloween vignettes. And again, that's done specifically so each one of them match if you do want to use them together. And then we've gone with this fabulous Gothic style, witch's spell book title. And then of course, just the text underneath as well, which just looks so much fun. So the back of our spell book, we've popped our red liner tape down the cover down the spine and down the other cover so it means these areas are going to stick flat on our background and then we've loaded the center of the book the center of the pages up with foam tape so you get that nice curved effect we can also encourage the curve a little bit by just taking those pages and gently rounding them off so i'm using the table as like an edge and then i'm just using my fingers to then basically just bow those card shapes over to give that a nice sort of um, curved look. So when we come to stick down, you've got that lift to the center of the pages. Again, I'm gonna just remove just part of the red liner tape to create a little tab. And then I'm gonna gently and easily just line up to make sure we've got that nice and even on our pages, making sure that center point is central before I remove the rest of the tape to stick in place. So remember, we're just removing part of the tape, hands-free then to adjust and work with the rest of the pieces without worrying that it's gonna misalign or anything like that. Um, Pearl says, hi there, everyone. Hannah, I'm late, but here and looking forward to a spooky time. Ooh. <laughs> Don't ever worry about being late with the, the lives. Uh, we take them pretty slowly. The idea of the lives is um, to give you guys more of an in-depth step-by-step of how to put a card together for you guys to be able to ask any questions as we go along. Um, you know, when, when Carla and I are presenting on air, we don't always get enough time to do sort of all the little steps like we're doing here. Um, so this is just an opportunity to just enjoy a little bit of crafting together, really. Okay, that's the page of our spell book done. Now, I do have another cut of the spell book. Similar actually to um, a demonstration I did uh, featuring Fairy Tale Day and Above the Clouds. We've cut another layer, okay? Because we want pages in our book. We want things to discover within the card. So to create our pages, all we're gonna do is take a nice sharp pair of scissors. And you see there, if I sort of twist over the edge, you've only got a few little pips holding those pages in place, which makes them super easy to go in, snip away, like so, and like so, to release the pages. And actually you can build like a whole sort of memory book design on the front cover, which is just, just a lot of fun, really. Snip away the other side as well. And snip, snip, snip and then along the base too. So it's just releasing those pages. We're just rounding off those pips as well, wherever we've released from the page, we're just following the cut line details, to smooth off those edges. And there we've got our pages, okay? So that little bit can go off to one side. And again, I've popped red liner tape down the center of the spine. And we're just gonna gently, again, just tease round those pages to give them a little bit of volume as well just to continue that curve that's already sort of suggested by the artwork and the shape of the die. That's gonna sit in the middle of our book. And I'm just gonna again, remove that red liner tape. Whenever I'm sort of doing construction on things where they're gonna be handled quite a lot, um, like the spines and like the, the folds within the book, for example, um, I always use my red liner tape just because it's nice, strong adhesive. Okay, so that's now stuck in place. So it means we've got pages. Now, of course, you could add more if you wanted to. So it could be a whole storybook. You could have different scenes. Perhaps you want a little owl on one and then a little story around the owl. Then you could go with your little mouse on another page. And then again, another little story on these pages. This is where things like our mirrored vignettes really do come into play. We create within each of the downloads our standard vignettes, which have the color on one side, and our mirrored vignettes, which then have the color on the reverse. This is lovely because it means if you're doing things like this, the backs of your dies are gonna be colored as well. Normally this would be white and it would be quite distracting if you were creating a book like this. 
where you're going to see the reverse of the dies. But by having the mirrored vignettes, it just gives you a little bit more craftability and a few more options on how we're going to work with these. Um, if anyone's wondering how to create the mirrored vignettes, we do have separate tutorials, um, step by step on how to cut and fold the mirrored vignettes to get that effect. I will pop links up after the design. Sarah says, can I watch this from the start again, please? Yes, absolutely, Sarah. As soon as we have finished the demonstration, we upload them to Facebook and um, more often than not YouTube as well. And you can watch them from the start as well. Um, Fiona says, the book is amazing. It's so versatile. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sophie says here, the base would be great for wedding invitations. Yeah, because you could have your venue, couldn't you? Then the next page, you could have your um, accommodation, you could have your um, timings and things like that. It's it's a little bit of fun. It's a nice interactive card design, of course, because we've created that on a card base. The whole thing stands up as well. I just love that. I think it's so much fun. On to this, we're going to start building our story. So what I've done, and you probably see in front of me, I've got a whole selection of um, cut vignettes ready to start decorating our spooky spell book. I'm going to start with the page flourishes. So these are designed again, just in that lovely purple colorway to tie in with the background and give you that, that theme running through. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my bookbinding glue, as long as the nozzle isn't blocked up, which it might be, because I'm terrible for putting my glue away. Oh no, no, we're good. That's excellent. A little bit of glue out on the side. And I'm going to use actually my glue applicators from Carnation Crafts because they just help me get into all the little areas, all those little fine detail areas as well. Just picking up a little bit of glue. And because if you were trying to put, um, you know, glue directly onto this, it would be really difficult to get into all those little, little areas and make sure it didn't squidge out over the sides. The glue applicator, I can just go in, smooth the white glue over, just in key areas. There's always areas you can find to glue with Carnation Crafts vignettes and then stick, oops, or drop them. <laughs> the choice is yours. So I'm going to line that up with the point for the corner and the point for the corner down there and then just stick that in place. Now you'll notice you've kind of got um, a more pronounced curve on one side so the vignette is designed to match that so you see how that curves nicely and then you have a more shallow curve on the other side which is perfect again the vignette is designed to match that perfectly as well other side too again in with my glue applicator and then just smoothing on a little bit of our glue Anywhere where I've sort of piled up a little bit too much, I can use the glue applicator just to smooth that out as well, which is really, really handy. This is a lot of fun. Does anyone have any plans for Halloween? Because I know it's uh, fast approaching, isn't it? Are you going to be making crafted little cards? Perhaps you want to decorate a, um, you know, one of those little sweetie boxes for when the children come around. So you've, rather than like a plain basket of something, you've got something with our die cuts on and our vignettes on, all going with that Halloween theme. I'd love to hear about your Halloween plans. I think for us, it's going to be a quiet night in with the baby. <laughs> um, yeah, I might end up dressing the baby up. That might be quite fun. I think that's that's always allowed, isn't it, with uh, Halloween and, and babies. <laughs> um, Sarah says she can make an Xmas one as well. Yeah, it would be great for a Christmas card, wasn't it? Actually, it looks quite like those traditional... Um, what would you call them, like carol, carol singer books, you know, the sort of Victoriana sort of look ones, that would look really sweet and include your Christmas um, designs on here. Uh, Sophie says, just downloaded the special Halloween edition bundle, thank you. That's really kind, thank you. Um, on that, I mean, it is worth noting, obviously, these are special edition vignettes, so they are there on the deal of the day, even if you don't have all the dies, or you might not have any of them, I would suggest grabbing the deal of the day today because it's something you may add these to your designs, you may add these um, little flourishes, you may add these die sets to your collection later on. And it would be fabulous to then have access to those vignettes to enjoy, wouldn't it? Rather than um, you know spending sort of the full price on each one of the vignettes. Grab them today whilst they're on offer. Because that just, just makes sense, doesn't it? It gives you more, more pennies to spend on other crafty stash, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm taking the circle filigree from the uh, wedding volume 
die set and I'm just trimming away so we've got little areas of flourish to use. I'm not going to use it as a full circle in the background. I'm just trimming away elements because I'm going to include it as a bit of a flourish, as a backdrop for my floral design. So I've just snipped away a quarter and that's going to sit on the inside of my book. Again, using my white glue. I don't want anything too um, lifted in the back of the book. Um, for this design simply because I want to be able to load up quite a lot um, and then have the page sort of just resting over the design there as well. So a little bit of white glue just then come in and stick that flourish as a backdrop. That's quite nice. If ever you're feeling a little bit intimidated or not sure, sure where to start with building up um, sort of volume with flowers and things like that, Putting in a panel of filigree is great because it breaks up that white space and then you can go in and start introducing your floral arrangements. So we're going to go in with that finished flourish, um, flourish floral even. Goodness me, it's a bit of a tongue twister in this gorgeous black design. As we said, it looks so sumptuous. It looks so elegant actually and I think that's great the way Carnation have done their Halloween vignettes is very very elegant yes you have the cheeky little humour characters there but you could go down a very sophisticated Halloween look as well so all of these things are designed to mix and match with however you like styling your cards here I'm giving our um finished floral flourished floral a little bit of a um balling with our ball to a little bit of shape and volume just following the cut line details to then lift that and give that a little bit of height what I'm going to do is come up with a composition that I'm happy with before I commit to sticking any of the flowers down because we can have a lot of fun with these perhaps we're going to snip into that little rose there for example perhaps we're going to have a couple of the lovely shaped black flowers you see by how tilting them and layering them you're creating a really fun dynamic look that looks like it's spilling out of the pages of your book we've also got within the flourished floral the smaller roses as well which are going to be great as a little bit of an accent design and then I'm also using the roses from the wedding volume which again have been coloured to match the Halloween vignettes and they look lovely in their little lilac colour as well as the little rosebuds you know we can tuck those into places as well. Once you're happy with the composition take a photo of it perhaps on your mobile phone as a reference point and then we can begin sticking these in place. So I'm going to cut down a few of the um, flourish lines here just by following the cut line details on the die cut itself and just going around the leaves. Amanda says uh, that's exactly what I've done Hannah I don't have all the dies but may purchase them in the future so may as well get the deal of the day when it's on such great value. Yeah do you know what us crafters really really know how to how to you know make the most out of our, our pennies for to add to our stash don't we? <laughs> Okay, a little bit of shape for that rose. This one, I'm going to leave the trail of the flourish on because I like the way how it, it comes down the page there. And that's when I've given the little bit of ball tool too. So to stick our roses in place, I'm going to use our pin flare glue gel. Now I've got a little surprise to share with you guys regarding pin flare. It's now available on the Carnation website. I know, how exciting. So on our website, we have got our pin flare glue gel the syringes we have double packs of the glue as well to top up and stash up if you are looking to add height if you're looking to add volume if you're looking to add that little bit of extra to your flourish designs to your die cuts when you've rounded them off you see myself and Carla using this all the time it's now available direct it's available to add into your baskets and then check out today to add your pin flare to your crafty stash now I'm layering that up. Obviously, the pin flare is going to sit just proud on the back. So that's then sitting on the filigree. What you could do is pop a few little flowers on the reverse um, to then hold that pin flare and cover it up. And actually, I might do that afterwards to see how many flowers I've got left. But just be aware, whenever you're adding your glue in, look for anchor points, if you like. Look for areas where we can stick our um, glue without it um, sort of affecting the rest of the card. So there we've got our roses. I'm going to start now building up this side as well. I'm going to work in them 
in tandem. I don't want to overload one side and not the other corner. I'd like to get a balance in this design. So I'm going to use the other corner of the circle here and just trim that down a little bit as well. Now, the reason why I haven't removed um, sort of the edge of the square is that it gives me a little bit more space to add my glue to then stick that to the page, okay? And I'm just going to trim these down and round these off wherever I've taken the die cut away. And let's just trim this one out as well. So this is the lovely thing about having these downloadable vignettes. You can download them, print them off, cut them, snip into them, do whatever you want with them. So many times to come up with so many different ways of using them. Uh, we have a totally open angel policy when it comes to carnation crafts as well. So they are yours to do. Um, you can make and sell. You can sort of make for charity, that sort of things. It really is up to you how you would like to craft with these. So here we have the other side. Now, I'm not going to have it out as far as the other corner. I'm going to tuck it in a little bit further, just like so. And again, there's my glue applicator gone. Glue applicator and my white glue along the back, like so. Uh, Sophie says, what do you love about the pin flare glue? Sophie, for me, um, and you know, I think I can speak for Carla on this as well, we love the height that it gives you, the dimension, the detailing, the just the feel of the extravagance with it as well. Because with um, you get the same sort of look with foam pads, but foam pads are kind of like a, a strip, okay? So that is basically your height. So you can load up more foam pads, but it's very... Um, blocked design sort of layering on one top and another because the glue gel is more of a fluid it means you can then um, load it more in areas and have a curve to it it gives us wiggle room as well which means if you put something down and then want to adjust it you've got time to do so um, and also it dries clear so if you're anything like me and a bit of a messy crafter if you do splodge it anywhere it's not going to detract from your overall design because it is clear um, Mo says, how do we buy the items on the show, please? Um, Mo, we have popped up link, um, links within the social posts to let you know where the dies are. We went over them in the front first part of this uh, demonstration as well. Um, so the dies themselves are available on carnationcrafts.co.uk. The Halloween vignettes are our deal of the day, available from our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk. If you click on deal of the day, which is in the banner, it will take you to the page where all of these are available. Um, Pearl says, sorry, Hannah, have, you may have mentioned this earlier, but can you use the vignettes with existing dyes? Um, I think Pearl, what you mean is, are these um, vignettes that we've created for dyes that are already released? In which case, yes, they are. These aren't a new collection. We haven't sort of um, gone out and said, right, we're going to make a whole new Halloween collection. What we've done is given you a whole host of vignettes for previously released die sets, okay? There are lists within the um, social posts of all the die sets included within the new vignette downloads. And I'm trying to mention as we go <laughs> the names um, of each of the die sets I'm using. So this one, for example, is the Flourished Floral. Um, they are all available on our website. And the idea is to give you choice. OK, so the idea is that you can either pick and choose. Perhaps you've already got these vin um, die sets within your collection and you're just enjoying adding in the new vignettes for them. So in with our flowers, again, keeping it a little bit more compact, making sure I don't go over the edge of the book here, because obviously the book stands up that way. Um, but anything where I've cut away one of the flourishes, they can then be used within the design, they can add in texture. So nothing's ever wasted. Even though we're cutting things away from the design, we're just changing the look. We're just changing the design of the flourishes. Okay, so that flourish can now sit sort of creeping up the edge of that book. And you see how now you're changing up the design of the florals. Now I've squished a little bit of glue on this one. So let me just take that off with my glue applicator. And let's have this one tucked behind, oops, excuse me, sorry, taking that out of shot, tucked behind this rose. Now remember, because these pages are opening, you absolutely want to um, 
design so when you open it it looks pretty so I'm going to cover up all of the little areas here with florals but you might not necessarily see them all from the front of the design so I think let's go in with a rose uh, this rose is from the wedding volume which is the same die set as what we're using for the bottom here but I'm just going to use the rose and the leaves. I'm going to snip away those filigrees and pop the filigrees in another orientation for our design. It's quite an organic process, this, just adding in design. And then shaping off. Shaping leaves. Where did my poke tool go? There we go. Shaping leaves we can do over a pokey tool as well. So just running our thumb and forefinger over to shape those leaves out, twist and turn them give them a little bit of dimension. Now again, because we're using those mirrored vignettes, no white bits are going to distract. Everything's going to look really, really pretty when you're shaping and giving them height. Um, do, 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 let me just see. Let's just pop that in there. Um, let's just Sophie says, does it dry in the tube? No, with Pim Flare, um, I think actually, I've just spotted Carla's come up with a comment. Uh, yes, so absolutely, Carla. So Carla's just popped here. Um, yes, it can do. So you can, um, what I tend to do is squidge out a little bit of um, glue in the syringe. Just so you've got a little bit of a cap on it. Let me just pop my finger underneath. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, and then it comes with, I have no idea where it's gone. <laughs> It's this is what happens when I go crafting. I get a little bit over overzealous with my mess. Um, but it comes with a little yellow um, cap that you can put on. Here it is. So by popping out a little bit just on the top there and then putting it into your cap, that little bit that you've sort of squidged out will dry. When you come to use it, all you need to do is get a pair of tweezers or your thumb and forefinger and pull that little um, plug out. That then saves the glue actually drying in the tube itself, okay? Um, that's the best way to deal with your, your pin flare glue. Okay, so there we've got our little flower. Let's just tease that into place. So we've got a little bit more showing over the edge. I love that. I think that's so, so cute. I'm going to go in, oops, with, do I want it that way? What do I want to do with this? Let's have that going up that way. So let's just cut off a part of the filigree. Do you see what I mean about it being quite an organic process? Because the filigree and the vignettes and everything work so beautifully together, it's a lovely way of adding craft, of adding design. Just having a little think. Let's pop that one just underneath like so and actually it's quite fun it almost looks like um a tangle of like brambles or things like that when you start overlapping and overlaying all the filigree it gives it that kind of um you know like in sleeping beauty when um all the vines cover the castle it's that kind of feel that i'm going for with this i think so i'm gonna tuck in extra little bits of vine extra little bits of filigree because i think that's giving it a really nice pretty but slightly borderline sinister. You know, it's that it's that uncomfortable feeling of where are these vines coming from? What what's the story behind these? Is this like a, a magical enchantment that's going to wrap this book in lots and lots and lots of vines? I'm going to use those vines as well because I think they are fabulous and just have them kind of coming free. I love the fact there's little rosebuds on there as well. I think that's really 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 sweet. But do you see how we're taking? cutaways we're taking snipped bits of the design and making those flourishes our own it gives you such a fun way of crafting so we're lifting and tucking and adjusting and then you've got that sort of creepy feeling of the vines escaping from the book there i'm going to go in with a couple of the um, sort of single roses there the little smaller roses as well just to build the volume down this side so we've got a black one there, and let's just break that black up with a little bit of purple. Playing with that light combination, playing with that light and dark adds to that feeling, doesn't it? It adds to that, um, what's going on here? The kind of spooky look, doesn't it? You're not quite sure of the intent behind the roses there. I think that's a little bit of fun. Let's just adjust that so it's not getting caught on my pages. Um, and also by using that light, it breaks up that expanse of black that we've got going on and actually makes the black look 
darker it makes it look more sumptuous because you're adding in detailing um let's go in with another rosebud i'm going to use my tweezers to stick this little beauty in place coming off those vines um but what i want to do is just start covering the areas of where we've cut away on the um vignettes that 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 flourish we used in the background, I want to start covering that up. Uh, similarly down here, I think let's go in with, do we want to go in with another purple to lighten and balance? Because we've got purple ending the flourish here. Let's go in with purple there. All these little ways of building your designs, you will find as you start to practice, as you start to play, having the ability to adjust as you go is so much fun. So there we've stuck all of the little flowers to cover that edge. And what you've created is basically a really rich bouquet. Um, I want a little bit more of a trail down on this side. So let's start introducing some of the leaves. So again, these are part of the Wedding Volume die set. And again, they've been coloured to work with this Halloween theme. What I particularly like about this colourway is it reminds me of like an icy look so perhaps you want to go down um i don't know like the lanania sort of route where you've got the ice queen and things like that that would be quite fun with this but we can stick overlap let the leaves overlap the flowers and trail down so again we're creating that feel to the design by adding in the leaves last you're just breaking up the look of those black flowers in the background. But what we're also doing is um, pulling in that filigree. So that filigree is the same color. By adding in the flowers, it's gonna get, um, sorry, the leaves here. It's gonna then tie in the background of your design straight into the foreground as well. So I'm gonna lift and tuck. Now this is why, again, another reason why I like the pin flare because I can go in lift and tuck and continue to build um, my designs, build my flowers, build my story very quickly, very easily and just in a really pretty way. Uh, I'm going to snip this one down. I only want the very tops of these leaves and each time I'm using a little bit of our white glue just to add in. So it's giving you that lovely texture, it's giving you that lovely volume and full look to your flowers here. Leaves are such a great way of adding texture and adding design to your pokey tool, I think, to your bouquets. So that one again, just escaping and you see how wrapping it in between the other little leaves there is just giving you that look to your design. Hannah, what do you do with all the cards you make on Facebook Lives and your demos on Korean craft? Do you give them to a charity? They are fabulous. Do you know what, actually, uh, Leslie, at the moment, all the cards I've created on the Facebook Live are sitting in a basket behind me. Um, so yes, absolutely, they need to go somewhere special where someone can make use out of them. Um, but for the cards we have on uh, the demos and things like that on Korean craft, um, we do keep them because we often do back to airs. Um, whereby we bring collections back um, and it just gives you a little bit of a chance to see different ways of using the designs. Um, let's have a little look. Oops. Uh, Patricia says, when will the glue applicators be back in stock? Patricia, I did try and find out last time. I'm not sure. Hopefully, if um, Mr. Mark or, or Nick or someone is watching, um, they will be able to let us know. Okay, so again, just filling. So it, it is a little bit like um, something you can keep coming back to. If you're struggling to add in flowers, add in design, just have a load of die cuts in front of you like I do here and just build as you go. So this design was not pre-planned. This is literally, yes, I obviously had an idea of where I was going with it, but I am just literally adding detailing in, taking a step back, looking at how it feels, looking at how the ideas come together and then layering and adding. You know, things like the tiny little rosebuds, which are actually intended as decoupage layers, make for great little um, points within your design to add in. And you see how just by extending, tucking, 
and extending, you're building this wonderful bouquet. So I'm quite happy with that side. I might add in the leaf that side, but I'm just going to see how many I've got left over by the end. This side, I feel, needs a little bit more attention because obviously you want to cover up the line from the, um, from the what should we call it, filigree layer there. And of course, we need a few more little, is that the word? Put scissors on it. Let's have a few more little roses here just to create a nice look when we open the book. I've got some nice black roses as well. Let's go in with those. Pimflare again, Pimflare on our website. Really excited to be able to tell you guys we had the Pimflare um, glue gel, three dimensional glue gel on our web now. It's such a wonderful, wonderful product. Something Carla and I, I know you guys know, we rave about it. So it's lovely to be able to bring that to you. And there, another little flower there. And let's have one of the black flowers over the top, just covering up where we've got those details. Um, <laughs> Elaine says, um, it's great demo, Hannah. I've just added most of the dyes and the vignettes into my basket, but I can't find any pumpkin dyes. Are they in another collection? Yes, so the pumpkin dyes, the one I'm gonna be including in just a moment on the design, this one here, this is from Season Decor, which is part of Equinox Blooms. We do have um, in the um, downloads another pumpkin uh, design, which is from Pumpkin Corner, which launched as part of Colour of Autumn. Uh, let's go in. I want a tiny little bit of flourish down this side. So I'm going to trim that away from there. Again, I'm just taking a step back. I'm just looking at the design that we've created and just seeing where we need to add detail to make it match, to make it more um, balanced is the word I'm looking for there. A little bit of glue and then just tucking. So don't ever, ever, ever be afraid of overlapping, overlaying, things like that, because in nature, that is how it would work. That is how these designs come together. I'm going to include a few little leaves just to add in a curve. So again, notice I only pop the glue just on the points because we're then tucking and overlaying and overlapping more little leaves. Where did you get to? That needs breaking up just a little bit so I'm going to snip away the top and just use a section of the leaves it will become instinct it will become how you want to design it um you know these demos are literally just for you guys as an idea it's then fully over to you to design and play and have fun with however you want to craft with these and uh, I know Carla and myself really really enjoy seeing your creations in our Facebook group Carnation Crafters as well and it's lovely to see how you guys all support one another and share your ideas as well it's just so heartwarming to see so again do you see how by adding in those leaves and things you're breaking up the background of the design now I would like a nice stretch of leaves just behind to elongate that filigree okay so even though you've got more volume on this side you've got possibly more um filigree on this side but it balances and also by placing that leaf in there we're covering up the last of that little area whereby um it was cut away the circle was cut away now i have to squidge that rose down so i'm just going to pull that out to cover that glue squidge and tease it round a little bit as well there we go uh, that was me getting over overzealous again with my designs. Okay, so just lifting that one there, tucking that right behind the rose like so, and it lays across anywhere where we can see the um, the outline, if you like. So there we have lots and lots of pretty pretty details. Now I'm running low on flowers. So let me just grab some more. I should have some more, hopefully in my little box of goodies next to me. Let's have a look, more flowers, more flowers if needed. So again, this is something you can do um, perhaps on a rainy afternoon, for example, cut all your die cuts, have them in little packets. So if you do get completely lost and engrossed in the art of making, you can then go in, grab some more and add in. 
So there, we're pulling in the detailing that we have in the background, so this lovely full look of the flowers behind. By adding in just one or two on the corner, you're drawing in that feeling that the um, flowers are kind of escaping. Remember what we were saying about sort of the vines coming up the sides of the books there? By then popping that just along the corner, you've got that little bit of breathing space because you've got the page behind it, which, break, which breaks up the look, but you've then got this idea that you've got your little flower on this side. Let's start introducing our characters. So I'm going to take again my dense foam pad and my largest ball tool. This is uh, the pumpkin, one of the pumpkins from Season Decor, which launched part of Equinox Blooms. And again, he's had a little bit of a spooky makeover. So first up using the largest ball tool and then I'm going in and balling away just the centres to give you that sort of undulated look, that round full look to the pumpkin. Him, he's going to sit just underneath our rose just there okay so again tucking it it gives you a much more natural look to your designs by tucking things under one another pumpkin gorgeous gorgeous pumpkin just like so i'm grounding him along the same level as what the filigree is for the roses or the bottom of the rose so everything then makes sense um coordinating Joyce says, Hannah, did you say the Spellbook vignette is on the website? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you just head to Deal of the Day, you will find all of the Halloween um, inspired special edition uh, vignette as a, as, a, as a bulk download, as a, a lovely um, Deal of the Day saving on that one. Um, Pearl says, well, I just looked at the vignettes and having a list of the dies is great. Absolutely. Yeah, you can pick and choose. Um, uh, do, do, do. Carla's added links as well, so you can find the dies for this spell book, which is fabulous. Um, Margaret says, a bit late today, but it looks beautiful. Margaret, please don't ever worry. These are always available for you to watch back afterwards. Um, is the deal of the way on the website? It certainly is. If you head to our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk, uh, there is a banner across the top uh, on every page that says deal of the day. You can click that. Um, there's also in it, sort of on the menu bar, a big red button that says deal of the day. Click on that, it will take you to the section of Deal of the Day where this bundle of vignettes is available to download. Um, bu -bu -bum. Christine says, just done pumpkins for my niece. Uh, her wedding is the 31st of October to put over sparklers. Oh, that's fabulous, Christine. I love that idea. What a fun, fun day for a wedding as well. Um, okay, so I've got a few little candles and things. I'm just going to have a little look to see where I want to place them because I think it's a little bit of fun to include, you know, the idea that the candles are behind the pumpkin there, but I'm going to snip the filigree away from these. So this is uh, like one of those candles you'd have um, on the wall. If we just snip down and release, you've now got a candle that can sit in a little tray again. We're the new spooky makeover. This candle is also part of Season Decor from Equinox Blooms, the same pack as the pumpkin we are using. And that is going to sit, where are you going to sit? You're going to sit possibly right behind the rose there. I just want a little bit of, that's it, a little bit of detailing, a little bit of a hint of the um, candle there, not sort of interrupting the face of the pumpkin, just behind the um, die cut itself. And then we're going to pull in one of the smaller tea lights again, this is also part of Season Decor from Equinox Blooms. Um, da, da, da. Let's just pop you along the base as well. So there we go again, just tucking them next to the rows, just having that detailing in there and just aligning them so they sit along the base of the pumpkin. By having everything grounded at the same level, it makes everything make sense and nothing looks out of place. Nothing looks like it's a little bit jarring to the eye, you know, so you've got the little pumpkin. I love doing that. Having the candles in front of the pumpkin, you don't necessarily see the spooky face on the pumpkin straight away until you look and then you're like, oh my goodness, there's a spooky face on that pumpkin. So, so cute. For our little characters, we're going to go in with our mouse and he is part of the Enchanters die set from Crafter Select and he comes with his little potion, his little, um, what do you call these, cauldrons? cauldron just in front so you're again layering you're building 
it's a lovely way of inviting people to um, discover elements of your design by layering them up. So potions, come on little candle. Potions go in there, just lower than the first candle, candle in front. Again, it all then becomes part of the design. You're not sort of, it doesn't scream, oh, here is a potion, here is a cauldron, things like that. It's just then tucked in, into the little florals of the corner. That tucking in, by tucking everything in, it makes it look really, really um, compact, almost like the die cuts were intended to work like this in in their full in their full design but actually as we know we're just going in and tucking and adjusting like so and then we're going to have mr mouse testing his potion so instantly that pumpkin becomes a backdrop it becomes a color it becomes a texture you've still got those other um cutaway holes in it as well so it's not overpowering it just adds into the whole vibe in with our glue gel, you watched me just round out that little mouse's belly. So I'm popping the glue gel, our pin flare glue gel on the belly and on the head, just in the areas whereby it is most rounded. And we're gonna have him just with his tummy overlapping the cauldron slightly and the spoon up so he's tasting his potion that he's created. Now, I really wanted to feature our little um, owl as well but he as you can see like if we put him just on the page he needs somewhere to sit so I've cut away um, that little panel from the candle so actually he could be sat perched on that little uh, area we cut away from the candle and I think that would be quite sweet to have him on the front I mean we could always nestle him inside the um, roses and things like that but actually I think him having sat on that little perch is quite sweet and um, it's a little bit um Edgar Allan Poe the raven uh the poem where the you know the raven just sits on top of the uh, I think it was the clock wasn't it and just uh crows just watching everything surveying everything now I'm going to stick that down using um white glue and I'm aligning the perch on the side of the page so it looks like it's actually part of the page Again, we're going to round our little owl out, just like so. And again, a little bit of pin flare. I might have to reload my pin flare syringe, actually, which would be quite quite good. Oh, no, Hannah, you shouldn't have done that. Now, this is something I always say. Be mindful of where you're sticking your glue, because obviously that area is going to overhang the edge of the book. So let's just take the pin flare off. Just scrape. Not too bad. Not too damaging. <laughs> and then stick. What we could always do, I might grab another vignette just so I don't stick any of the sticky on the back. See, another way, another reason to have lots and lots of vignettes to hand is um, if you do make a little error, where's my little owl? Where have you gone, Mr. Owl? If you make a little error, you can always then re stick, re cut, re stick, and then not have any problems like I've just done, where you might end up sticking your pages together. Luckily, I spotted it before I got a little bit over exuberant. A new one. <laughs> uh, we all do it. It's live. It's fine. There we go. So he's going to sit there. So I will have to reload my uh, pin flare glue gel. So all we need to do, these syringes are, are reusable. So we just take out the plunger, like so. Pop that to one side just for the moment. And then you see how often I use my pin flare. I'm getting down this tube already. The tubes um, come with a little turn key. So you just slip the turn key over the end of the tube and then wind. It's a little bit like um, corned beef. It's that same sort of thing. So we're holding uh, the edge of the syringe, just reloading. We don't put too much in, we don't overload it. And then we sort of scrape the syringe across Pop our tube of glue to one side, remove any little sticky bits, and plunger goes back in, like so. If you have got it over the edge, um, a great thing to use to remove it is um, a baby wipe with some um, hand sanitizer on that gets rid of most stickies for you. So there we have our sweet little Lau in his little new wizarding robe, which I just adore. It is the cutest thing ever. And he's now looking over the edge again love the mirrored vignettes for this because normally that would be white 
but you've got the little detailing on there. So he's sitting on there. He absolutely needs a hat, as does our little mouse. And these hats are both from the Enchanters uh, collection, Crafters Select. So I'm going to go with I'm going to go with a wizard's hat for Mr. Mouse because I feel like he is in charge. He's the one making a little potion. And I'm going to just pop a little bit of white glue along one edge. Anything where I'm using something small and fiddly, so I'm using my tweezers to go in for the placement at a jaunty angle because why not? <laughs> and then for my little owl, this is actually intended for the mice, but there's absolutely no reason why our owl can't be wearing one. And again, it's just cute because it looks so small next to the owl. It's, I just love it. I just think it's really, really sweet. Um, let's pop on that there. Oh, I made an error with the um, pin flare. It doesn't come with a, a turnkey. Um, but if you have a look on, you know, places whereby internet, you know, lots and lots of different places, you can probably buy packs of the little turnkey. So apologies for that misinformation there. Okay, jaunty little angle. Okay, I just think that's so much cuter than a big hat to fit the owl. I love the fact it's small. The reason why I've gone with the orange one is because you've got this sort of mirroring. You've got the orange little claws. You've got the orange beak, the orange in his lovely big eyes. And it just finishes that little balance as well beautifully um now i'm just gonna flip this over because i did get a little bit carried away with my pin flare on the back and i want to go in with a few just little areas just to tidy up wherever i pop pin flare on the back we can go in with a few little roses on the back just to tidy wherever that's stuck with pin flare it's almost like um what did nick describe it as the other day like a seed you know where you're, you're trying to stick things to filigree and you haven't got much um, base of the filigree to use things with? If we then just create this, you've instantly got a larger area in which to start adding in. I've just smudged that glue down there, but that doesn't matter. I'll just give that a little bit of a wipe over. And there we have a really fun, spooky, spectacular design using the deal of the day vignettes. I think that's so much fun. Of course, you can include different characters. You can make this your own, introduce the other vignettes as well. But having that array of florals, I think creates a beautiful backdrop for our spell book design. So again, just to run through the designs we've used, the background there, the spell book is from the wedding volume die set. The little mouse, the cauldron and the hats are all from the Enchanters, which is a crafter's select. The pumpkin and the candles are from uh, Season Decor. The owl is Have a Hoot. Um, the flowers, the purple flowers and the filigree and the leaves are all also from the Wedding Volume die set. And then the big black flowers and the little smaller black flowers are all from the uh, Flourished Floral die set as well. I will pop a list up at the bottom of this Facebook Live so you know which ones we've used, um, but it just gives you a little chance to enjoy some of the uh, Deal of the Day vignettes. The, as we mentioned, the vignettes there are all the special edition Halloween ones. We have got, let me just turn the camera around, we have got more shows today. So we have got two more shows, one at three, at, sorry, one at one and one at five with um, different designs. So I'll be using the other dies and the other um, Deal of the Day Halloween special vignettes just to give you a little bit of a different look. But that's the book we have created for this morning's with those opening pages to reveal those beautiful flowers in there. Perhaps this is a memory book that you're going to create to add in your photos from this Halloween. Perhaps this is um, maybe someone who just loves uh, black and purple. I mean, one of my best friends, Nikki, this would be her birthday card, hands down. She would absolutely adore this. And Fiona, who's watching this, again, another great friend, would love a black and purple themed um, uh, birthday card as well. So have a little bit of fun with them. Don't forget to hop on over to our group, Carnation Crafters, post up your designs that you've been making as well. I'm going to have a quick uh, flick back to make sure I'm not missing any questions. How many pages did you use in the book, please? So all I've done here um, is used the base as one page and then I've cut away 
um, one another one vignette to create the top pages there. Um, but of course, you could add in more and more pages should you wish. Um, Sophie says, can you buy the book die on its own? The book is part of the wedding volume die set, which comes with um, obviously the book, uh, the purple roses you see me use, this filigree panel, the circle filigree panel, the um, leaves, bride and groom. They will be featuring in one of the um, upcoming lives uh, for today and Mr and Mrs as well, all of which have had a Halloween makeover. Um, Lisa says, beautiful demo, where can I find a list of the dyes used? Lisa, we have shared a list on uh, most of the social posts, but I will pop another list up after um, this in the comments section for you. Um, Holly says, such a great idea to make the dye collections go even further. I hope Carnation Crafts will do this with other collections in the future. Very clever. Holly, do you know what? We already have been. Uh, we've got extra colourways um, for the 3D Dove. Um, from above the clouds uh, we did him in a like a blue tit or a bluebird version and also a phoenix um i nearly said something else then but i don't know if that's been released nick's probably watching is probably going to tell me off now sorry <laughs> um and we've also done uh the peacock so we've got the peacock um from nature's grace picturesque peacock uh that's um the traditional peacock colorway is available too so it's something we're hoping to bring more and more to you guys as well because you know we love it when we're able to extend your craft stash with these beautiful colorway vignettes um Cheryl says, this is absolutely gorgeous. Emma. Thank you, Cheryl. That's really kind. I've brought the wedding book die two weeks um, again and not cut it yet. I've got the pumpkin die. When was that launched? Love this, Hannah. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the pumpkin die. So the one I've used in here, season decor, was Equinox Blooms, which was September, October last year. It was a pick of the day. I remember that. Um, lots and lots of love for the designs. Uh Alison says, what was the building used on one of the finished cards? Um, we ran through a few of the designs earlier. Let me just grab that one. I think the one you're talking about. Let me just grab it. Um, ba -ba -ba. Where have you gone? There you are. Was it this one, this building here? That is Quiet Retreat from the Tranquil Times collection. And actually, this is a great example. So because this uses a fair few of the same vignettes, as what's in this but look how different they are isn't it fun isn't it a great way so the circular one which is the base for this one we used as a cutaway and the filigree in this one you've obviously got the owl in there as well you've got the candle from these season decor and you've got the pumpkin there as well and the leaves and things from wedding volume so again great example of how to use so the little building with that is quiet retreat and that is from tranquil times i will pop a list up of all the dyes I used in this demonstration and then a whole list of the ones that are available um, as part of the new Halloween vignettes. Um, Joyce says, did you say the Spellbook vignette is on the website? Yes, Joyce, it is. Again, I will pop links afterwards. It's probably easier than, than explaining over. Um, da, 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 let's just have a look. I'm just trying to catch up. You've sent so many questions, which is lovely. Um, Judy says, how do you get the back of your vignettes as sharp as the front? Mine always look faded when um, stuck together. I use Carnation Crafts Pro Printing Paper. Um, basically, the easiest way to answer that is make sure you're using either clean cutting plates or have a sheet of copy paper in between your cutting plate and the cardstock you're cutting. Um, and that makes sure any you don't get any transfer of the cutting lines from your plates onto your vignettes. Um, another great way is to use the cut tidy as, um, well, it's normally you see me with cut tidy, uh, which is our plastic little shim that is used to create a more beveled edge on your designs. You can have it open. This is the A5 one. We do an A4 version as well. If you then cut it, so you've got, uh, say that's the vignette and then the die on top, the plastic will then stop the um, transfer of the cutting lines as well. So that's another way. But copy paper is a great way because um, you don't then use um, double the amount of cut tie, if that makes sense, because obviously you're folding it as a pocket rather than a full sheet. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then treat them as you would do your normal way of vignette. So for the background of this one, so that's the foreground. Uh, I'm not on that camera. Hold on. <laughs> 
So that is the foreground of that vignette. Okay, so you can see all the cut line details. It is going to give a different look because um, you get the beveled edge on the front. If I turn that over, oh, and get it into shot, Hannah, that would help. You've got the background there so it is a slightly different look because the die cuts into the top of the vignettes so you get a more flatter look on the back all you would need to do with that is ball it treat it exactly the same as you would your other vignettes you're shaping them you're molding them you're changing them up and then if i show you that is the reverse okay so just for comparison that is the front, that is reverse. By then using the ball tool, yes, it's still gonna look slightly different. That's just the nature of die cutting. But by using it and treating it as you would do um, a normal vignette, you still got that same beautiful look as well. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I've got lots and lots of messages coming in. So I'm, just, I'm trying to keep up with them. So apologies if I have missed any. Um, da -da -da -da. Lots of people saying they're a little bit late this morning. That's fine. I don't blame you. Um, stay in bed where it's nice, toasty and warm. I'm sure you guys have got other jobs to be doing on a Sunday morning. Um, so we will upload this afterwards for you to watch back. We will be back at uh, one o'clock this afternoon with another demonstration showing you a different card design. Um, that one I might include the um, more of the Tranquil Times collection because we've got Wiley Fox and we've got um quiet retreat we've got over the trees lots and lots of pretties to include in that one and then of course we've got a further demonstration at five o'clock this evening as well thank you so much for joining me this morning and i shall see you back here at 1 p.m bye everyone <laughs>